What's up, y'all? Thanks for stopping by the Surge T channel. I am Surge T. Tonight, I'll be doing my video on the rundown and thoughts for Friday Night Smackdown for the 17th of September 2021. Let's get into it. Then uh, they show a recap of the devastating repercussions of Rollins' curb stomp on Edge. You know, he's going to be on later on. So, Rollins, talk about that. But let's get into the opening segment, and that is The Bloodline. They open the show. The show, SmackDown, emanating from the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Now, it's set that Reigns and Lesnar face off at Crown Jewel. I read that, saw that on Twitter, and they confirm it here for the Universal Championship. But will Reigns be the champ at that time? Reigns, of course, goes into his usual spiel, talks to Knoxville and says, Acknowledge me, says the tribal chief. He then talks to Reigns and says, Hey, have these guys show them how to properly acknowledge him. And of course, he ever, the ever, the carny he, that he is, hyping up his client, his advocate, his tribal chief, whatever you want to call it, you know, he even calls out Balor. He says that he's afraid, because if not, why does he have to tap into his inner demon? And he honestly, he says, sees fear in Brock's eyes. Really, Heyman? I mean, thinking, don't know about that. I didn't see that. I think that he handled all three of those guys pretty easily, right? But then uh, Big E's music hits. And I saw this on Twitter. I have the habit of looking at Twitter before I watch SmackDown. And I did see that he was face-to-face -face with Roman. So this doesn't surprise me. And he, he is sharing the ring with the Universal Champion. And chance break out of You Deserve It to Big E. And I do believe he does. It's a long time coming. I'm surprised that they <clears throat> pulled the trigger this quickly. And allowed him to become the Universal Champion so quickly. You know. I mean, the Universal Champion, the WWE Champion, so quickly. Probably was going to hold it for maybe a little bit longer, but um, apparently they want, uh, they have a lot of faith in Big E, and they allowed him to cash in on Bobby Lashley. Now, then the Prince Finn Balor, his music hits, I'm like going, what's going on? What's happening? You know, it's, it's you know, it's going to be uh, one of those evenings, right? <clears throat> Everybody that's involved in the title picture is coming out, you know? And then uh, Adam Pierce, you know, they also open it. Adam Pierce, you know, uh, during the break, he makes a a match official, and that is Balor and the new WWE Champion Big E versus the Usos. And uh, why did Cole call this a championship contenders match? Is every goddamn match going to be a championship contenders match? I think if I, if I heard correctly, they're saying that if. Probably if someone uh, is in the, a match with a champion, it's a contender's match because if they pin the champion, they could get a title shot. But if that's what they're trying to say it is, then why is it that uh, Shotzi Blackheart and uh, Knox, I think they pinned the, the World Tag Team Champions, the uh, Women's Tag Team Champions, and they never got a shot? Didn't they pin them like twice in a row? Didn't they beat them twice in a row? You know, Is it only the ones that they want to give title shots to? It gets really annoying when they keep saying it's a... Championship contenders match. Balor and E are not in any contention for the tag titles. I mean, if they pin, maybe. But I hate that name. It's stupid. It sounds dumb. Championship contenders match. And we're going to have to hear that every damn show, right? Every Raw, SmackDown. A championship contenders match. Doesn't make sense. Maybe I'm just not hearing it right. Of what their rationale is for calling it a championship contenders match every time there's a champion with an with a, with a, with a opponent. You know, just because it's a champion in there doesn't mean it's a contender's match. So, you know, you know what I mean? I, you know, let's, let's move on. And I got to say, Big E is getting some major pops from the crowd, you know. They're loving him in Tennessee. And then Balor, uh, in the end of this tag team match, which was okay. I mean, mm, wasn't really anything to, uh, you know, to really just be like, you know, wow, that was a great, no, it's just like, yeah, it's just some time, a time killer to move on to the next segment or next match. And in the end, you know, Balor hits the coup de gras, and then Big E hits the uh, big ending simultaneously, and E goes for the cover and gets the victory for his team. 
And uh, this is the thing that I noticed throughout the entirety of this program. What is up with the volume of the people speaking as opposed to the crowd? The crowd is louder, but the commentary team is like drowned out during matches. You hear the cheers, you hear the chants, and you, know, you, you hear like lower than a whisper. You know what I mean? I'm like going, what are you guys doing, man? Amp up the damn commentary volume and then, you know. Because if they're going to talk, you might as well put it up. I, I Sometimes I don't like hearing the commentary because sometimes these guys are inane when they talk, whatever they say. But it's like, that's the purpose of the commentary, right? We got to hear them call the action, you know. So it's like, come on. And, you know, I've seen, you know, matches. You know, sometimes, sometimes the commentary desk is taken out, right? And then the commentators don't have you know, their headphones on, and then sometimes a match will keep going. And I've noticed that the commentary team really are needed when it comes to watching it on TV. Of course, in the when you're there live, you don't need it because you're there live, you're 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 into the crowd, I mean, into the match and everything like that. Because it's a different uh, thing, atmosphere there. But when you're at home, yeah, it does make a lot of difference. And so how about you amp up the damn, the damn volume for the commentators? And even backstage, when Roman Reigns is talking to Heyman, you can't hear him. The crowd is loud as fuck. Like, what the, you know, what's going on with that, you know? And then, talking about that, you know, Reigns is still asking Heyman about SummerSlam. Get past SummerSlam already. You haven't gotten down to the, uh, to the, down to the, uh, what do you call it? To what's behind it? Like, did Heyman know? I mean, you know, but then Roman does bring up a point. He goes, hey, he might show up at Extreme Roles. You know, he pays him to know in advance. You know, but it's like, get past that. You know? Haynes is, Raymond's is, oh, Raymond's, Heyman has told you how many times? And then you're still like, oh, you, you, did you know? Did, did you know? Like last week, did you know the week before that? Did you know? Like you don't get, you haven't gotten to the point of it yet? You're the tribal chief, aren't you? You know, and you're the fucking that, the guy who came and wrecked everyone and, um, what's that? Wreck everyone and leave, right? That's your first thing when you came back to um, WWE, right? But uh, let's move on. Rick Boogs in the IC champ, uh, not the IC champ, you know, those ICs you get in 7-Eleven, but the Intercontinental Champion, King Nakamura, head to the ring. And while well, Boogs plays the king to the ring, and the guy does know how to play a guitar. He knows how to, you know, play it. I don't know if he's really doing it, or is he playing to a thing, a recording, but I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. You know, and, it's, and um, I thought uh, who, who was going to tag team match and everything, but you know, no, Robert Roode is going to face uh, Rick Boogs. And then, uh, in the end, uh, you know, uh, Rick Boogs is still undefeated as he delivers a power slam and pins Robert Roode. But then Cruz and Aziz attack Boogs and Nakamura and lay them out outside of the ring. That's when they were on the, you know, uh, announcer's table, announcer's desk, and there, you know, Rick Boogs and, you know, Pat McAfee always joins them, and Nakamura's rocking out, and then they get attacked. And then Cruz is in the ring, and he demands a rematch, and, like, whatever, like, I don't care. And it's getting to the point now where his accent is beginning to become a parody now. Like, it doesn't even sound like it's natural. I mean, then again, I don't even think it is natural. He's just, you know, he just plays that. I mean, he probably is from Nigeria, but he probably is American-born. Probably doesn't even know how to really speak Nigerian. I mean, I don't know. But it sounds like a, a parody now, his accent. It's like, it doesn't even sound like how it was before. Like, you know. Let's move on to this. Uh, Happy Corbin. He's going to face KO next. And I hope KO removes that smile permanently from his face. And then they had to replay the KO show where all happy and... Logan Paul were on, and Paul is just useless, worthless, and what does he do? Yeah, I know what he does, but what does he do? You know what I'm trying to say? He does something, but does he really do anything? You know? And then they're, 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 they're parading him on uh, Raw, and they're parading him wherever show he's on, he's parading him here, and they're parading him there. Like, who cares? He's not a wrestler. He's not even interesting. There's some other... People out there, uh, YouTube personalities, all that, more to be more better on SmackDown or Raw than him. That like, guy's just like, what do you call it? I think he just lucked into his fucking success, you know. But then uh, 
you know, Kevin Owens, you know, he talks about uh, being mad, furious about, you know, oh, happy Corbin and uh, Logan Paul, and his anger will be used as fuel to beat up Corbin and turn that frown upside down. And then when, and then we will have a happy Corbin, oh, happy Kevin, says uh, Kevin Owens, called it KO, but then as he walks towards the ring, Corbin attacks from behind, and he walks away smiling, and is this match called off? Um, well, it was. Ended up. I thought they were going to restart it, but they didn't. So they're going to prolong this uh, rivalry, I guess. Maybe extend it to a uh, kickoff show uh, for uh, Extreme Rules, and they're going to have a match. Maybe. Now, Heyman is going to get a heart attack if Kayla keeps popping up from nowhere. And Heyman assumes that Kayla has a sexual infatuation with the wise man. And that's what... Uh, Roman Reigns called him earlier and said, hey, wise man, you know, asking him, you know, talking to him, you know, and he called him that, and he, he first I thought he said white man, I said, oh, is that, that's a little controversial, why is he saying white man, but he said wise man, I hope he said wise man, I don't think WWE wants to tread in that damn corner, and then tread in that, uh, you know, what do you call it, into that territory, and then Big E's there as uh, Heyman turns around, and, uh, And he says that he will be facing either Brock, I mean, yeah, Brock or Roman at Survivor Series uh, in that champion versus champion thing. I don't know if they're going to do that. It's been successful. They've done it a couple years now where Raw's champion goes up against SmackDown's champion. But then he says maybe Finn will spoil the Tribal Chiefs party. There's rumors that uh, Finn is going gonna to win the title and then that match at thing, even though it's advertised as a Universal Championship, Reigns and Brock will just go at it in, in a typical you know, what do you call it, um, grudge match, you know, and then uh, the Usos uh, attack the champ, lay him out, they really did a number on him, and left him huffing and puffing, and he was like, trying to catch breath, trying to catch his breath, and uh, you know, the Usos really did, like I said, did a number on him, and uh, letting him know that, hey, you may have beat us, but we're not going to let you get away with talking and all that trash, and stuff, especially about their uh, cousin Roman, now, this is the thing, the Rollins, you know, he's uh, going to go out there and talk, and let me guess, you know, Rollins is going to be all apologetic and remorseful after his actions against Edge, and then he's going to laugh and say whatever, what is he going to say? I'm sick of his gimmick, his shtick, his stupid annoying laugh, and his ridiculous outfits. He was serious for the majority of the time, I was surprised. And then, in the end, I guess he wants to go one more time and end him. But he's still talking about Edge because I did skip this. Because I'm sick and tired of his horse shit. You know. It doesn't work. It, it's just like, he's he does deliberately does what he does to uh, Edge. And then he turns around and he's remorseful. I don't know what to, to, to say. I don't know what to think. You know. Then you see him in here, he's all serious, and he's telling the crowd, what do you think? What do you think was going to happen, you know? And then, you know what I mean? Like, move on already. Move on from Edge. Edge needs to move on from him too, you know? I just hope that they do give him the title before he retires again, Edge, because he deserves it. He's worked hard, he's come back. There's people, people, probably people are going to say, yeah, why would he deserve to get a title shot? He's a, he's a, he's a part-timer. Yeah, he came back, and he is wrestling on a regular basis but then you know why would he why should he get the championship why should he do this why should he do that why you know because he's edge this guy came from being told that he could not ever wrestle again he gets this you know life-saving surgery like i said the technology now in the medical field is is, is just totally insane how they're able to do stuff like this you know did it for daniel bryan you know, there's talks about Paige possibly coming back. Rumors, but I don't know if she got the surgery or, you know, I don't know if she's planning to and then she's going to make a comeback. I don't know. But it would be great to see her back. She's still young. She's still, like, in her 20s, if I'm not mistaken. You know, she did retire young. She only retired, like, a couple of years ago, a handful of your time. Yeah, right? So, it would be great to see her back. I mean, you know, we want to see the people come, you know, leave on their terms and not ever on a terms of the injury or the doctors, what they're saying and stuff like that. And WWE is already iffy about who they say that can't come back from an injury. When there's rumors that Daniel Bryan was cleared, but their doctors, WWE, did not clear him. You know, you look at Sting, he wasted 
five years in WWE, and then he goes to AEW and he wrestles. Because WWE, they were, I think they were scared because of those concussion uh, you know, lawsuits out there and other things, and they didn't want to get a lawsuit and be liable for something. But it's like, look at Sting. He's taking all these hard, harsh bumps. Like he got attacked by, um, who was that that he got attacked by? Um, who, who was that? Oh, oh the, um, no, oh, who was that? But it's like, they did a double team move on him and could have been 2.0. Trying to remember, but in AEW, but it's like he got hit with a, you know, with a double team move, and it's like you're like, oh, you know, like I was, I'm like that too, like kind of like cringing because I'm like, oh man, did it hurt him? But then like he got up a little bit later, but he got up and he looks like he's, you know, WWE. They're very very shaky, you know. They're very like even maybe even say shady in how they handle people, like you know. But maybe it's just because they don't want to have a lot lawsuit on their hands. Maybe they don't want to risk someone getting injured. So they're playing it safe. Yeah. But now. The next. Ah. Becky Lynch is interviewed by Kayla. And again, another Who Gives a Shit segment. And I'm beginning to tire of her antics too. Like, and then she says he's going to check out Bianca Belair's homecoming. Next. Zelina Vega and Carmella versus Liv Morgan and the... Long lost uh, Tony Storm, who apparently was able wasn't able to find her way to the to the uh, arena. She was able to one time, but then she ended up in a stupid backstage segment with uh, Dolph Ziggler, and then she got lost again. And then here she is. She was able to find her way to the ring and find herself a partner. And this is like a, almost a month after her SmackDown debut. There's rumors that they don't know what to do with her. You don't know what to do with Tony Storm. They're, they're absolutely lazy, the writers, or WWE. How about you look at her time in, even recently in NXT, and especially look at her time in damn, what do you call it, NXT UK, and even in the Mae Young Classic. Didn't she win the Mae Young Classic? Didn't she earn a title shot? Didn't she become the NXT UK champion? Women's champion, I should say. Didn't she, you know what I mean? She beat Io Shirai in that match, right? No, that uh, finals of the uh, Mae Young Classic. But that's what it was, right? But you don't know what to do with her. And then she didn't do really anything here. A little bit here, a little bit there. And then, you know, Liv Morgan was pretty much doing a lot of it. And then we talk about rinse and repeat. What happened on NXT a few weeks ago was Mandy Rose. She gets hit in the face. And then the following week, she comes back with a mask. Before that, we know that, that Seamus had his nose broken, supposedly, by Humberto Carrillo, and he had the mask on. And I'm just thinking, we see Carmella, Carmella go face first into the turnbuckle, and then she gets counted out as she sits, goes outside the ring, because her face, that's what Mandy Rose did on NXT a few weeks ago. And what is she going to do? Is she going to appear next week in a face mask too? It's like, what is up with WWE and their laziness in writing? Booking. Whatever they do, it's like, first, like I said, first Seamus, then Mandy, and now Carmella. Really no originality. You know. Now, Street Profits has a segment, and I skipped it, because they can get to the point of being unlistenable. And then, Carmella is in the trainer's office, and it's all good news, it's all good, I guess, because her nose ain't broken. And then she accepts Liv's challenge. And I hope Liz, be, you know, does, does, that does break her nose. And then let's see what... Storyline per se, I don't want I don't want Carmella to, you know, to get really hurt. But for storyline wise, let's see it happen so that then we can see her with the mask too. You know, but then we'll just know that WWE has no ideas. They have nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, Finn Balor's in a uh, vignette and he talks about not being born into a bloodline, but into a family of coal miners. He shouldn't even be in WWE, right? Meaning maybe he should be down there sucking in that, that uh, what do I call it, that uh, black um, dust and all that stuff. That, and a lot of these coal miners end up with lung diseases and all that stuff because of being down there for hours and hours, you know. Then he says that extreme rules, he looks into the eyes. You know, he says that tonight, he says Reigns looked into the eyes of a challenger, but uh, Finn Balor, but... At Stream Rules, he looks into the eyes of the demon, Universal Champion. 
making a bold statement, but maybe it's because of the rumors, and maybe they're true, that he's going to be the Universal Champion. And to me, it's about time, and he should get it. He got taken it away from him, and I don't think he ever had a really, really good, real a real number one, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, shot at the title. I think he was in a fatal four-way when he came back, and I think he was, maybe he had one, he had a shot at the title. I mean, well, yeah, he did with, um, with Reigns, but then, you know, Reigns, the Usos beat him up beforehand, right? But uh, they should give it to him, you know. Reigns has had it long enough. He can he can afford to lose it, and then he'll get it back. Maybe he's gonna go to Raw for the uh, what do you call it for the uh, what do you call it the uh, draft, and then maybe he'll go after the Big E. Now on Raw next week, uh, it's gonna be the Bloodline versus the New Day. So we're gonna see the SmackDown uh, SmackDown's champions, the Universal Champion and the Tag Team Champions, go to Raw to face the New Day. You know, we'll see how that goes. Is that going to be a kind of like a precursor to what we might see at the draft? And maybe Big E is going to, you know, I mean, he's there now. Yeah, but is he, is he going to remain with the New Day? Or is the New Day going to get drafted to SmackDown because they want to keep them apart? You don't want that it's going to be them again together. Because then Big E is going to be outshined by the New Day gimmick, you know, instead of him being by himself. You know what I mean? And uh, Sonya Deville she continues to ignore Naomi. Enough with this. I mean, Naomi did drop some facts just to let Sonya Deville know. I mean, she's a two-time SmackDown Women's Champion. In fact, she was she has accomplished more than Deville. She even said that she got there before Sonya Deville did. And Sonya Deville hasn't accomplished nothing. That's true. Has she done anything except be a... Uh, a, a, a decent um, general manager, assistant general manager. She just makes some good decisions, but you know what does that do with her, her for her resume or for her like her career as a pro wrestler? You know. Now, Dominic versus Sami Zayn. Now, before that, it was announced during this match that Naomi was fined for insubordination towards Sonya Deville. What the fuck? So insubordination. She was stepping up to her and telling her, up, hey, you know, how about you get me? But she did say that, you know, that things are going to happen. You don't know, you don't know about nothing about me. You, you, you better know something about me because if I don't get what I want, a match, you know, she was, okay, so she was kind of stepping to her, you know, but what do you, what do you expect when Sonya Deville is playing the role of, oh, I don't know who you are. Oh, I don't know what you've done. So you call me next week. Call me, you know, and we'll talk about it. Like, she did that the week before and the week before that. And then was, when uh, she came back. She was even pleasant to to um, to her and saying, Hey, you know, I'm here. And then, looks, you know, Sonya was looking at her like, What the fuck are you? Like, she had that look on her face. Like, eh. it's like yeah, it's only, no, it's only Naomi who's been there. I don't know how long. How long she been here? Maybe a decade almost. Maybe. I don't know. But she's been here a while. She's been here a while. And then in this who gives a shit match, Dominic is caught doing a frog splash as Zayn gets the knees up and pins him for, and gets the victory. Sammy's like this, three in a row. He goes up to uh, his uh, you know, his father, zero and three. That's your son. Your son. That's your son. He's talking shit to <laughs> Roman Reigns. I mean, to uh, Roman Reigns to uh, Ray. You know, you gonna keep doing this every week? Am I talking about Raw or am I talking about SmackDown? You know what I mean? Like, what's going on with SmackDown? Like, like not, last week was okay. The week before that, I was it was iffy. I'm like, well, what's going on with SmackDown? Is is are they getting lazy now because the draft? So they're like, going, okay, we're not going to really write anything. Let's just write it out for just next few weeks until the draft comes in October. Was it October fourth? Uh, October eighth? I think something like that around there. It's going to start on the on the fourth. You know, on, on you know. Maybe that's what they're doing, but so what? You don't you don't be lazy. You know, keep it up. SmackDown is supposed to be the the people's choice for being the A show. And then, you know, of course Raw is the damn D F show. I don't even think it even rates. It shouldn't even be an A through F. It should be you know what I mean? Like it does you know what I mean? Like it's I don't know. But let's uh move on to the I guess the final uh you know segment that is uh Bianca who is being Celebrated tonight, and even Knox County, Tennessee Mayor Kane 
Oh, Glenn Jacobs. He's not known as Mayor Kane, but for WWE purpose, they say Mayor Kane, but it's Mayor Glenn Jacobs. He's in the house tonight. And then it's also announced that Liv and Zelina face off next week, and uh, King Nakamura defends his IC belt against Cruz. Zelina saying that if she wants to get at, what do you call it? At my girl, uh, uh, Mella, she's going to have to go through her, which I don't think that Liv Morgan is going to have a problem because anybody who faces Zelina Vega goes through her. She's a tough, tough chick. She, she can kick some ass. I've seen her in her training sessions with when her and, uh, well, now Malachi Black, but then was Alistair Black, and they were training with Sheamus, and they were putting Sheamus through the damn paces, man, making him sweat hard. You know what I mean? She's tough, but they, they don't, they're not going to do nothing to her. I even, I even read, like, a thing that said that uh, WWE lied to Zelina Vega. It was like a, a thumbnail. I'm thinking, oh, they must have lied to her and said that they were going to give her a, a title or they're going, they going to treat her right. Look at where her husband is now. He's Malachi Black in AEW, and he's kicking ass. He's one of the new uh, villains, the dark characters, the heels out there. And he's kicking major people's, you know, he's going through the damn Nightmare family, you know, Cody Rhodes' uh, family, you know what I mean? And he got Cody Rhodes next week, you know, at Dynamite. He's doing things, and then his wife's doing nothing. But then again, they're getting paid decent. They're getting paid pretty good, so I guess, you know, it's okay. But, you know, I, hope, I don't know how long she signed for. Oh, it ain't too long. Now... Kane introduces the hometown girl, Bianca Belair, who was a four-time All-American, multi-sport champion, just a piece of a competitor, you know, and uh, her hometown is pumped and proud. And she's going to take back her title because, as her daddy put it, if someone starts something, you better finish it. And then he's talking about how Becky caught her off guard at SummerSlam, but she has always scratched and clawed her way back to the top. And then Kane gives her the key to her county. It's a big key. What door does it fit? I wonder. Pat McAfee saying that door can open any door in uh, Knox County. I mean, okay. Now Kane tells Bianca to come back after winning back her title because there will be a huge celebration waiting for her. And all I'm thinking is, but where is Becky? When is she going to arrive and crash the party? And she does as Belair leads the crowd. Into singing her college song, the alma mater, alma mater, alma mater, right? Yeah, their song, right? And then Becky comes out all obnoxious and singing off key, and boy, she is just as annoying as her baby daddy said. You know. Now, a "You Don't Go Here" chant started by Becky, and everybody in the crowd is chanting it. And man, is Becky! Really an overactor. I mean, she can't. She in fact can't cut a promo, but she can deliver a rock bottom or whatever she calls her move, and she leaves her challenger at Stream Rules on her back, and somewhat ruins what was supposed to be a triumphant return for Bianca. And this, but uh, I don't know. SmackDown is uh, it was a disappointment. Really, nothing special. What, what was special about it? You know what? What popped off? I don't, I don't even think anything really popped off to me. I don't think, I don't know, I don't, nothing did. The third a match in a row, uh, week, a third week in a row, you know, Dominic and Sami Zayn. No fucking 50-50 booking, just straight gets beat Dominic every week. You know, like I said, the segment with uh, Becky and Bianca. Great to see Kane, you know, now that he's a citizen and he's, more, more or less, he's Glenn Jacobs, a politician now, mayor. You know, and to all those guys who are haters of fucking Kane or hated it when he was wrestling in the recent years, I go, he ain't wrestling no more. So how about you guys show him some love now? Stop being haters. You know, Kane's done a lot. He's a smart guy. He's done a lot for, you know, Knox County and the community and all that stuff. You've watched, if you even follow him, he's 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 great. He's an amazing, you know, amazing person. So enough with the hate. And, uh, you know, God, it's like, I really just, really just nothing. Nothing in this damn program that popped off to me. Sonya Deville continues to act like she doesn't know who, um, who, what do you call it is? Who Naomi is. Then, you know, Zelina Vega and Carmella. Zelina Vega acting like she's, she, she agrees with uh, Carmella that she's the be most beautiful woman on WWE. How about Zelina Vega? She's gorgeous. Look at that face. 
Look at, look at how pretty, you know, she's, just, she's, 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 you know, you know what I mean? And she's like going, oh, yeah, you are, really. Oh, your, your nose is okay. There's nothing wrong with your nose. That's stupid, man. This is the first time that I've ever been pissed off at SmackDown. Like, I've, I've always had nothing but positive things, some negatives here and there, but, you know, it's always outweighed by the positives. But in here, it's just like, mm, what, what's, what, what, went, what went on? I know what went on, but then I asked the question, what went on? That just goes to show how thing, and then like Roman Reigns in the bloodline is starting to wear wear thin now. Maybe the only interesting thing maybe is Big E showing up, but I already knew, cause Twitter spoiled it for me. So, yeah, you know, that's all I gotta say about uh, SmackDown. You know, this is my rundown of thoughts, and that's my rundown of thoughts. So uh, for those of you who stopped by and checked out my video, appreciate it. Appreciate your support. So, uh, like I said, that's my video. So, for those of you who stopped by and checked it out, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. And in closing, as always, take care.